Protecting the neck is essential in wrestling, as careers can be shortened or ended with one move. Neck injuries can also form over time as a result of an accumulation of bumps or wear and tear. But today, we're pinpointing 10 exact moments where wrestlers suffered broken necks in the ring. Our first example takes us back to an episode of SmackDown in 2009, where Drew McIntyre had recently been repackaged as the chosen one by Vince McMahon. Whilst in the midst of a big push, McIntyre would hit his Future Shock DDT finisher on Charlie Haas. However, McIntyre failed to let go of Haas's arms, which resulted in Haas breaking his neck right then and there, as his head crashed to the mat. This is just like McIntyre's assaults. Drew McIntyre, he, uh, he did that no-handed DDT to me too as well. Um, and, and my neck, I heard it crack. You put your life in somebody's hands, that fucking move, man. And I don't know why he didn't let go. Haas returned to the ring shortly after, but wouldn't last much longer before being released from his WWE contract. Buff Bagwell's career was on the upward trajectory as a member of the NWO during the Monday Night Wars, but his momentum would come to a halt during a tag team match on Thunder in April 1998. Bagwell was set to take a top rope bulldog from Rick Steiner, but Rick would end up coming down before Bagwell did, resulting in Buff's head snapping back as it collided with the back of Steiner. Bagwell would be completely paralyzed for five minutes having suffered a bruised spinal cord. I was neck down paralyzed for I know a good five minutes. Bulldog hits, I'm paralyzed. Scotty comes in, I'm going, you can see my mouth moving a thousand miles an hour. I'm going, Scotty, no, I'm hurt, I'm hurt, don't do that. Bagwell managed to return to the ring, but WCW failed to effectively follow up on his comeback from nearly being permanently paralyzed, as they had him return as a heel lackey to Scott Steiner. A bruised spinal cord would also be the result of perhaps the most infamous neck injury in WWE history, which occurred at SummerSlam 1997, as Stone Cold Steve Austin battled Owen Hart for the Intercontinental Championship. Prior to the match, Austin suggested that Hart hit an inverted pile driver on him. However, Austin wasn't sure of Owen's technique of sitting out on the move as opposed to coming down onto his knees like a traditional tombstone. I said, you're going to go to your knees, right? And he said, no, I'm going to drop to my ass. Then I said, well, you need to go to your knees, right? And he said, no, I dropped to my ass. That's two times I said that. And I was thinking, I'm dealing with Owen Hart, brother of Bret Hart and son of Stu Hart. I guess he knows what he's doing. Then he picked me up upside down and wham, dropped straight to his ass. There was simply no room for me to protect my head. I remember kind of picking my head up from the mat and telling the referee, Earl Hebner, tell him not to fucking touch me, I can't move. Still, we had to get to the finish and I had to win. So I was crawling around on my elbows and I told the referee, roll up for the win. He told Owen what I'd called and the next thing that happened was I did the worst looking roll up in wrestling history because I couldn't use my limbs. I meant for that to be the end of it, but Owen kicked right out after three. That kick out hurt me like hell too. Owen's decision to hit the move the way he did would have devastating effects for Austin, as the neck injury he received in this match ultimately shortened his career. Tensions were running high between Hardcore Holly and Brock Lesnar ahead of their match on SmackDown in September 2002 as they exchanged words when facing off before the bell. But neither man would have wished for what happened towards the end of the match as Holly would be about to receive a powerbomb but struggled to get up all the way. As he came down, Lesnar would accidentally drop Holly on his head and this led to Holly suffering a broken neck. I tried to grab his head and I couldn't quite reach it. Holly returned to WWE over a year later as he sought revenge over Brock for nearly ending his career. As we've seen so far, timing is so important in wrestling. If the wrestlers aren't in sync with each other, it could spell disaster. And this would sadly be the case in September 1998. Raven and Chris Canyon were about to deliver a neckbreaker powerbomb combo move to Villano 4 but Raven would forget to do a countdown from three to ensure both he and Canyon moved at the same time. This meant Raven came down first with the subsequent powerbomb folding Villano 4 over onto his head. So many spectacular new balls. Oh, oh my goodness. They bent the man in half. Raven and Canyon would then break character while checking to see if Villano 4 was okay, and Raven even going to the hospital with him afterwards. Despite walking out of the ring on his own two feet, Villano would later learn he had suffered a broken neck, but would make a full recovery. Our next example was what earned Chris Benoit the nickname The Crippler, as during a match with Sabu at ECW November to Remember 1994, Benoit would launch Sabu into the air with the hopes of hitting a flapjack. Sabu, however, tried to land on his back, but he didn't have enough time to rotate and instead landed square on his head, breaking his neck in the process. He was supposed to come down on his belly. I guess he was up in the air midway, decided that he wanted to land on his back and didn't have enough time to get his head under and came right down on his head. 
Sabu didn't have any time off to heal or get surgery though, as he wanted to keep wrestling. Just like Sabu continued to wrestle with a broken neck, Regal would do the same for over 20 years. Regal's neck injury would occur at WCW 4 Brawl 1993 in a match where he faced Ricky Steamboat for the World Television Championship. The finish would come when Regal hit a bridging German suplex to get the three count, but when executing the move and then preparing for the bridge, Regal would land right on his head. I land and you can, you, you can see it clear as day if you watch this right now. And my, you see my neck, my head hits and my neck just oh. goes to the side and it went crack. And all my arms went dead. Ah. And it was never right after that. It would be years later that Regal would find out that he had been wrestling for most of his career with a broken neck, following the botched German suplex all the way back in 1993. Going back to the land of extreme now, as in 1995, Taz and Eddie Guerrero would wrestle Dean Malenko and Too Cold Scorpio. In the middle of the match, Malenko and Scorpio would hit a double team spike pile driver onto Taz, which broke the neck of the human suplex machine. Now we saw earlier how Owen Hart opted to hit the tombstone from a different way and how badly that went. Well this time, Too Cold Scorpio would hit the traditional pile driver by dropping his knees instead of sitting out. And I landed right on my forehead and just jacked my whole neck back and that was it. And I was out for a year. Today, we see bigger wrestlers taking more risks than ever. And for Ivar of the Viking Raiders, he would take a fatal risk in an eight-man tag match on Raw in 2020. The 300-pounder leaped through the ropes to hit a suicide dive onto a pile of wrestlers on the outside, unfortunately suffering a broken neck upon impact. I ended up breaking my neck when I dove out of the ring. It was hard to get any kind of clearance or any kind of idea from the doctors as to when it would be the time, it was really just a range, anywhere from you know, this to this. Ivar was able to successfully return to the ring after a seven month absence. A year and a half after Ivar's injury, Big E would suffer a similar fate on SmackDown in March 2022. During a tag match, Big E would take a belly to belly from Ridge Holland on the outside. And now Ridge with a throw, his all dropping Big E right on the top of his head. Big E would be thrown too high up into the air, instead of being thrown up and over, clearing the shoulders and this mistake would see Big E collapse onto his head, leading to fractures in his C1 and C6 vertebrae. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if this content interests you, check out our video on 10 times a wrestler suffered a concussion but carried on the match. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.